Hi, it's Bob, W9RAN. Well before I was first licensed in the 1960s, one of the biggest amateur dealers in the country was in Council Bluffs, Iowa, World Radio Laboratories. WRL, in fact all you had to do was say Leo and everybody knew you were talking about Leo Meyerson as he called it, the house that Ham's built. Well Leo didn't only sell radio equipment, he manufactured it and I'd like to show you an example of one. This is the Dual Bander 84 which as you can see sold for $160 and it was quite a bargain because for that price you got a 300 watt transceiver that would work on two amateur bands and it was single sideband which was what everybody wanted. Of course you had to have a power supply and an antenna and some things so he offered some package deals for mobile or fixed operation and not to mention the WRL easy payment plan. Well here's what the dual bander looks like. It's a pretty compact little radio uh, yeah, that, that first and I'll uh, tune around a little bit here. In fact, you can see inside. Used a few tubes and some transistors. Partially solid state. Kind of a big deal back then. Then we're on 40 meters. So the beloved state capital here of South Dakota. And uh, overlooking the Missouri River. Pretty Valley. good audio, and uh, we got a whopping quite a bit of it. Degrees. Now we'll switch bands. All it takes is a little pull of the knob, and it's on 75 meters. And let's see who we can find. So that's pretty much receive. Tuning the WRL dual bander is really easy. We simply unbalance the carrier, key the microphone, tune it for maximum. In fact, we're getting, um, I'll null the carrier back out. There we go. Testing, one, two, three, four. Testing, one, two, three, four. There you have a look at 1967's best bargain probably in amateur radio, the WRL Dual Bander 84.